Hi. Hi. It's Friday. And it welcome. Is. We made it to the end of the week. It's welcome track girl to track girl, track girl Summer Friday. Welcome to Track Girl Summer. It, it, what a show that we have today. So excited. Okay. Stay focused. I'm your host, Natasha Hastings. This is my co host, B. Corey Carter. We are bringing the culture, and boy, are we bringing the culture today to track and field. Corey. All okay. right. Trap Girl Summer. Trap Girl Summer. Follow me, Natasha Hastings, Twitter, IG, Facebook, YouTube. Follow Corey, the Corey Monster, Twitter, IG, YouTube. Most importantly, follow Trap Girl Summer, trapgirlsummer.com. Get your merch, get your trucker hat, your t shirt. Send a black woman, well, two black women some money. We'll send you something back. But follow us on Twitter, (laughs) Instagram. Make sure you're subscribed to this channel. Remember, we're coming to you every Monday, Wednesday, Friday. We're bringing the tea. We're bringing the shenanigans. But most importantly, your favorite athletes. So I'm kind of just running through it because I just want to get to it. (laughs) We we, we have an exciting guest today. Um, We... we, Y'all were here for the predictions during the Tokyo Games, and, you know, it got a little spicy. It got a little fun. I lost my voice, all the things, but he's also our first international guest. So let's just do what we do, get into the fit check, and then bring our guest to the stage. Yes. Um, In honor of our guest today. Oh, that's what's going on. No. (laughs) No. You know, you know, and don't, don't think that the baby wasn't ready either. <laughs> you know, I'm usually annoyed with Kovu being in the fit check, but today is, it, it's appropriate. <laughs> it's appropriate. But, okay. We got Jamaica in the building. So I said, I love a theme. Our first international. <laughs> Kovu's tired. We went on a very long walk this morning. But look. Kovu is always over you and shenanigans. That's what it is. Don't blame it on the walk. Kovu is Kovu is like, leave me out of this, mom. Leave me out. He loves it. <laughs> now I'm annoyed with myself because I'm Jamaican and I don't have on no colors. And let me tell you something. What I know about my people is that they are the most patriotic set of people that you will ever meet. You think Americans are crazy about America? Jamaicans love Jamaica. But anywho, the usual on the face, 400 meter diva uh, lashes, lipstick. Uh, I'm giving a little mom oversized sweatshirt, you know, track life. I got to go to practice early, later. I'm rocking a little onesie and my onesie. Apex sneakers. <sighs> Let's get into it. Let me catch my breath. Let's do it. Yes, Aisha, warrior paint on the lips. War paint. Thank you. Warrior paint. (laughs) Oh, my God. I got so excited about the fit check. Um, Look, I ain't never done an ombre eye in my life, but I figured it out for today. You executed. Uh, You executed. Good job. Thank you. Um, Yes, we have an Olympic champion straight from tokyo straight to Tra- girl summer um but he oh he has a whole, the whole set he's got i just realized this he got bronze in london um and in 2012 and then in 2015 at the world championships he got silver in beijing and then 2021 he got gold in tokyo so he's he's got them all um he it got silver at commonwealth And he is the first Jamaican to win a medal in the 110 hurdles for Jamaica. Oh, I was like, but but, because he's been doing this for a minute. You're right. (laughs) And he is the reason why Jamaica went back to back with Olympic gold with um, Omar McLeod winning in 2016. And now, I'm working on it, guys. Don't judge. First of all, I'm going to put a disclaimer out. People in the comments were like, oh, I can't wait to hear Corey's patois. And we're going to keep waiting because <laughs> I can't and I won't because I it's disrespectful when I try. So well, let, let me help you out. The Hansel Parchment, a.k.a. Parchment. 
Respect, respect, respect. Thanks for having me, guys. Man, thank you for being here. If you can't tell, we're excited to have you. I see it. I see, I see the <laughs> jump my colors. Represent. Did you, you know, catch that? Respect. <laughs> I had no idea. So before we get in... Tasha, you knew I was going to have some sort of shenanigans. I should have. You're right. Like, we bring the shenanigans, and the shenanigans have been brought. <laughs> but let's get into it. So, Par- is it okay if I call you Parchy? Sure, sure. Parchment, Hansel, how would you like to be? Okay. <laughs> so, we had a little fun, a tremendous amount of fun watching you this summer in Tokyo. Um, and we had a little segment on the show called The Podium Picks, where we brought on some other athletes and we predicted who we thought would be on the podium. So we thought we'd share a little bit of how that went. Show you a little bit. I would like to hear that. Show show a little bit of the shenanigans. (laughs) So we had Jeremy Warner and the world record holder, Aries Merritt, on to talk about it. I believe it might be yama yama bananas that I'm I'm ready for this. Yeah, that's right. (laughs) Okay, no, so- I feel like if 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 Grant if Grant falters, the party is the kind of person that finishes his race falter. well. No, that's if he falters. This is hypothetical. Now I don't, we already locked in. I already got Grant winning. But if something freak happens to Grant, God forbid, Parchment can come up there and snag that gold for Jamaica. I'm just saying that's the kind of that's the kind of runner he is in final. So nothing freak happened. <laughs> You just won that gold, Maybe. <laughs> but from the world record holder and the shenanigans on Track Girl Summer, man, Parchi, talk to us about it. Tell that I mean, I lost my voice the next day. Corey was at my house. I was running through the house the whole night. Parchi, Parchi, Parchi. <laughs> I feel like everybody more excited than than me. Really? Yeah, because. The whole time I was just planning, planning um, how how am I gonna execute this now? And as you know, Grant he he got a exceptional start. Mm-hmm. If you watch him every single time, he's at. I'm like, how is he at hurdle one already? And I'm just <laughs> getting my first step. You know what I mean? And I studied that, and I realized I need to make some changes if I'm going to catch him. And I made the changes. You know, normally them say don't change anything um that late you know what i mean leave it leave it for the background season and i say you know what i'm gonna change this that and i changed it twice I change it in the semis i change it again in the finals and that that's all i did to catch him up man what was the change just the, the foot placement and um how high i was coming up in the set position mm. wow you, you, do you do you seven first. step yeah, yeah. The seven step is easy. It's just, it's just six five. <laughs> fast enough. You yeah. I mean? But yeah, I just changed two things and that made the difference. But talk about execution and like knowing your competition, right? Because I, I think Grant was leading to like hurdle four, but like maintaining that focus under the pressure and like, like you said, like having the wherewithal to. I'm going to make these changes to make the adjustment. And I don't want to say sneak up there, but you see, like, people were talking about Grant, but we were like, hold on now. Wait about, wait, what What about Parchi? And you were like, what about me? <laughs> it's it, it good that um, not all the focus was on me. So that's one of the, the good part of it. But, you know, I, I'm not worried about the pressure or, or I don't focus on those things. I just focus on the execution. And I knew what I was going out there to do. I even told my coach, you know, coach, I'm going to go for win this. You never believe me. And see there. You know what I mean? So. See there? <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love it. Speaking of your coach, I saw that he mentioned um, you had an injury this year. So you didn't necessarily have as many races as you would have had in a season. But, you know, going back to your experience, you've been around the block a couple of times. Bronze medal in 12, silver medal, Commonwealth uh, silver medal as well. Um, 
just talk a little bit about what it was like going into the season, kind of under raced and dealing with the injury and just kind of third place finish at the trials and then on top of the podium at the games. Well, I think most people know that, especially the trials, was one big chaos. You know what I mean? I, I almost wasn't on the team um, if, if the people got their way. But thank God it didn't go that way and I got my opportunity. But it was a tough season. I was... I had a stress fracture in the left foot and I had to be in the pool almost every single day swimming. The people let me start saying me a swimmer now. And I <laughs> for the for the what the one hundred meter freestyle or something like that. Even on the news they must say, Oh, what part you do? And I swim him I do now. So they never caught me in. But um I I was confident, I knew what I was doing. Um you know, you know how, how stretch fracture is. You have to be off of the foot. Mm-hmm. And I was in the gym almost every day. I couldn't do any squats, any um, like deadlift on them things. I had to do everything sitting down, them kind of exercises that don't put weight on the foot. And as soon as the foot was ready to go, I was ready. And I just kept working, working, working. And I just kept chopping down my time. And... You know, you just have to maintain confidence. That's the main thing. So I feel like most people, when they get injured, um, they lose focus. They start watch other people who who um are trained well and are run well, and take away from them getting better, faster. So that didn't happen to me. I was, I had this laser vision on on where I wanted to go. So that was it for me. Well, it definitely showed, Corey. I am just kind of in awe and like your your mental strength because and we're gonna get to it but you had some issues getting just getting to the race period and then you're changing your start day of the olympic final you got a new start how are you able to just go out and execute with all this chaos going on because if if i almost just a race and then was also trying something new in the Olympic final. I don't know if I would be confident on the line. First of all, my start doing good, right? It's never been good for many years. So making a change in the start, neither year nor year, it's, 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 it would be a good gamble then. You can call it that. <laughs> you know what I mean? And a good gamble to make because it's not like, say, I'm going to start fast anyway. So I why not you. try something um, that can potentially make it faster. So that's what I did. And, you know, I had a, I had a long chat the, the night after the heats with um, Tracy. I don't know if you know. You should know Taekwondo Tracy, Julian Ford. They are sprinters on the Jamaica team as well. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah and we, we reason about the start. I mean, I say, oh, you know, say, we need to make some changes because Grant is almost as tall as me. And every time we, the gun go off, him have two, three strikes on everybody. How him do that? I mean, I'm not weak. So why me can't come out like that? Hold on, hold on, you know? hold on. So, yeah, man, I had, to, I had to observe him and, you know, I learned a few things. So I forgive thanks for that. And, you know, it just worked out really well. But, like, when, when I almost missed the bus and I was in the taxi, um, getting to the, the warm up track. I think I, I had everything on the wrap same way because, you know, I was there saying to myself, well, if I panic now, that really not going to the situation. I'm not going to get to the track any faster. So why am I going to stress about that now? I just drink my water and and just watch the road. When we met up on some traffic and then we start panic a little bit now because me, the traffic start move slow. I say, John no star. I look on the time now, I say, I wonder if I have enough warm-up time. I know I'm gonna reach before the race, but, but the warm- you know, when I come on the hurdles, yeah, I have to warm up properly. I mean, I pre the warm-up time. Normally, I'm not even put on my bodysuit until like the warm-up complete because I don't want to set up the bodysuit. Warm. Don't warm up in the other gear, take off that, put on a fresh, dry bodysuit to go and run. Listen, as I jump out of the taxi and reach around the truck, I start putting on the bodysuit already. Because we never have much. I think we have like 40 to 45 minutes. 
So I had to do a quick warm up. But I think we did kind of warm from all of the anxiety as well. So yeah, it worked out pretty fine. So, you know. But it's, it, it all come down to not stressing over what you can't control. Spoken. Because that don't make sense. I love it. So, because it makes sense. Like, when you say it, you say it so nonchalantly. And it logically, it makes sense. But we all know that, like, yeah, like, if I don't have a start, if I try something, like, no one, that makes so much sense. But I would never think that. Or, like, if I was in the car, like, yeah, it makes no sense to panic. But that'll mean I won't. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. I love it. Let me just also say, I am enjoying, like, so my father's side of the family is Jamaican, and I just love talking to my, I, I try to speak a little patois, you, you caught a little bit of it, but I just love hearing you tell the story in, like, the raw accent, like, and then you were like, I reasoned this, and I was like, oh, yeah, that's, that's the lingo, that's, I'm enjoying it, I'm loving it, that's why I'm over here cheesing, like, yes, give it to them. <laughs> Can you... Can you break down that story of, you know, you realized you were on the wrong bus and that journey and the lady that helped you get some uh, cab uh, fare? All right. Well, let me can summarize it. <laughs> right. Well, what, what, what me and my coach always do, we try to get to the truck um, at least three hours before. You know, I'm always just get there early so you can just sit down and, and relax a little bit before the warm up time or maybe think a little bit about how we are gonna approach the race and thing. So question, do you also get there early to to snag some hurdles? Cause I feel like all hurdlers are like, we have to make sure we don't have to worry about that's another my thing. And I'm notice everybody does that and I'm like, why why everybody I run go grab the hurdles? I'm like are everybody hurdles and the years. So me, me see, if me see somebody put out some hurdles, me just go, go over them. I know yours. All of it, it's there for all of us to use. No, I get so, But you're not concerned about, like, if you're doing a certain drill, the spacing being right? No, no, no. I'm not worried about them thing. My drills work different from everybody else. And That's I am crazy. very flexible. So I, I see that. Sorry, I couldn't get to it fast enough. Couldn't get to it fast enough. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> Yeah, man, as soon as somebody set out the hurdles, especially the girls, because they know them setting them out low, we just, we just start with some drills. I'm watching her face. Yeah, so normally, normally me and the coach are leave out um, together, because they leave early. But they had some coaches meeting, so he said, just go on ahead and he meet me up by the track. So I listen to some music now and I head to the bus stop. And some Kirk Franklin may listen at the time. My mother used to play them thing there when I was much younger. So I feel that was the vibe that morning. Mm -hmm. And music in my ears. I see the, the, the bus stop say athletics track. So, you know, I'm going to ask no question. Um, I can't hear what the volunteers are say because my focus on the music. Some just go straight on the bus. I'm sitting right at the front seat. Down on the phone and and I, I'll search for some more music for download. Some more Kirk Franklin at that. And we see a girl come on with, with something in her pouch. Something long in her pouch. And I turn back and look on her so when she walk past. And I say, well, this this not look like no athletic implement I've ever seen. <laughs> you know, I'm looking at the pouch thing. I say, that's an a pole vault. So what what is that? What she what she come in with? But when I turn and look, I don't see nobody else with anything like that. So... I say, all right, maybe she'll go somewhere else. Both on its way now, it wasn't until after a while I realized say, something looked right. The, the, the road looked different. I start text the coach and I say, yo, coach, you look like they're on the wrong bus. You know? And I start say, yo, John Ostar, the people I'm going to say a yard now, big, big ants apartment, miss <laughs> semifinals, go on the wrong bus. Can you imagine? Can you imagine? <laughs> I mean, me was supposed to be one of the senior man in the team. Go on the wrong bus. So, them thoughts I got through my mind at first. You know, but coach that say, yo, don't panic. Um, as you reach, just jump back on the bus, come back at the village. And thing. Um, 
reach a place and realize is some aquatic place. Afterwards, I figured it was, I think, a ruin. So I come off of the bus now and I me, me talk, me talk to one of the volunteers. She doesn't speak no English, so she bring me to this other girl who could, who could speak English. And me ask her, I say, yo, how, how me can I reach to the, to the athletic stadium? She, she basically tell me, say, yo, I have to take the bus go back. And me, when I look on the time, me I say, this not going to work. If I go back to the, to the village, then for wait for the next bus, we got to track. I lose too much time. I need to go straight to the warm-up track. And you know them games here, yeah, them always have special vehicles, branded vehicles. So then I try to get one of them there. And they must say, oh, that that not going to work. You know them people are very strict and them, them both rules and regulation. Them not going to buzz for, for you. So she said, then she, she was the one who mentioned the only other way we can go is by taxi. I mean, I say, oh, why would I work with money anyways? The bus them available. I mean, I have no money. I say, all right, John will start. I may go to normal. Go back and sit down on the bus for probably like two minutes. I'm saying, you know what? I'm going to ask the lady for some money. I'm going to go and ask her. And she kind of hesitate a little bit because I guess, as I said, them rules and regulation thing. And if anybody see them I do certain things, they can get in trouble easy. Mm-hmm. So she kind of had the money under the phone and pass it to me. And then, of course, I don't know where the taxi them did. So I have to ask her that now. And then she said, all right, she's going to bring me. And she, while we are walk over there, me just ask her, her name and them thing. Then we figure out say she have the same name as my younger sister. Oh. Mm-hmm. Except it's spelled different. But then we reach, we reach like a checkpoint where she couldn't pass because she had this radio thing on her, mm. and one of the other security guard them they wouldn't hold it for her. So she, so she had to ask one guy outside to carry him over to the taxi. I don't know what them tell the taxi man, but the taxi man had the road. He must step on the gas. You know what I mean? And it's just it's just the traffic part did kinda of, kinda of panic. But other than that, made it smooth, man. No problem. Focus cause made have a plan from before after I don't reason with the money about how to improve that start day. Eh? I plan it out. I say I go get out earlier and me go catch him. You know what I mean? Cause I was lucky enough to get get for run with him. Um the in the heats as well as the semi so you know that i was blessing in disguise yeah it sounds mm-hmm. like from everything from the kirk franklin to meeting the young lady to the taxi driver <laughs> pushing it through the like god was really on your side <laughs> you had reason to be like all right let me just let me not get caught up in what i can't control but you stay right. on the process i love it I love it. I feel like I was listening to the right music that morning. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. For sure. For sure. Yeah. And I want to ask, uh, now you came back to meet the lady who helped you find your cab. And you now, did you end up giving her your medal? <laughs> like, you know, a lot of people have been asking that. And I'm like, why? why would you think? After so much hard work over the years. I don't know. Because it looked like it on your IG, it looked like you gave her the medal. Look how long me I try to win this gold medal and just, just come get it. Just so. Just like... <laughs> <laughs> no, man, just give her it, you know, so she can take some picture and feel how it is and everything. Okay, because I was like, dang. Mm-hmm. He really uh, was no. like, help me get this. Here you go. That's what you call yeah. autopsy. He's like, let me go and find this woman. You helped me. Thank you. Look what you helped with, but give it back. <laughs> <laughs> no, I couldn't leave. I'm not, I'm not um, sure. Say, oh, you you made this possible. I mean, if it weren't for you, I probably would still get to the stadium, but I wouldn't get the warm-up time I need. Right. Yeah. I yeah. wouldn't be able to run, to run properly. So I have to show gratitude for that. Yeah. Awesome. And I'm, I think it's dope that you like made the point of going to find her and saying thank you and like being grateful because a lot of people don't realize that there's a lot of people when you stand up on the podium that, that help you get to that place, you know? And she, she literally helped you get to that <laughs> that place. Um, so I think it's dope that you like 
live a life where you're practicing gratitude. The right thing, man. Yeah, yeah. Right. And, you know, I, I really hope that people take something away from that. Just, you know, something positive. Just to remember, say, yo, you can't do it alone. You're going, you're going to always need assistance. There's going to always be somebody there in your corner, somebody who is going to help you to move forward or move to the next level. So give thanks to that person there and show them, say, yo, you respect what they do for you. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So, so as as a, I'm going to say fellow Jamaican, <laughs> but I have to ask, I want to talk about sort of um, the Jamaican dominance in the hurdles now, right? Because the hurdles itself, the 110 hurdles is a hot competitive race. You won the first Jamaican uh, Olympic medal and then world championships, silver, and then you had Omar McLeod winning the gold in 2016. And then not just you on the podium this summer, but also Levy snagging the bronze. Um, tell me how exciting it is to see like Jamaica, like you've always been dominant in the, in the sprints, right? <laughs> but now see that move over to the hurdles and, and obviously now you being a part of that. Well, of course, it's an exciting feeling. Mm-hmm. And everybody knows that the 100 meter, the 200 meters, the 400 hot events. Most people go to the the meets to watch these events because it's the, we call it now, the prime events. Right. And I would really like to see hurdles start to, to take over, you know what I mean? Or at least join these events with that kind of, with that kind of force. And I feel like I help to, to, to push that, especially at home where the young boys they've now realized say, all right, we, we can we can do other things, you know what I mean? I know all of with us. And them know, I know all of them are gonna run nine point something. Someone um better suited for hurdles, so why not test it out? And we have other we have other young people that come up now. Um when they Broadbell who ran thirteen why run thirteen ten, I think, or something like that. So we have to look forward to him next year. Yeah. They make a child like heart like fire. <laughs> it's not like fire this year too, right? <laughs> All right, yeah, no, go ahead. It's really, good. it's really good to see that more, more of the boys are trying out the hurdles, and not just focusing on, on the one hundred. So the, the hurdles can become more competitive and more of an event that people will look out to watch. Yeah. And how how did you find the hurdles? How did you start hurdling? Kind of funny story. Um, I was I was throwing shot put and discuss and javelin. Mm-hmm. And I don't know why coach thought I was suited for that because I, maybe just long and maga. I never have no muscle. Maga is for those very that... <laughs> so. Um, I had to pass where the where the guys had set up the hurdles like every evening to go to where the circle is. Or where the throwing area was, and every now and then we stop and 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 you know do a step over and try to do what we see the, the guys them doing. Cause I was taller than all of the riddlers them that were there, so I say, oh, why 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 am I not try this too? So it was just one one day coach, cause usually we start warming up and and preparing before he gets to to the school, my best school. In St. Thomas, big up St. Thomas. So, he just followed early one day and, and saw what I was doing and decided, all right, I'm gonna give me a try. And I don't think it was much long after. I'm not sure if I had two months good of training. I won my first race at the Eastern Champs um, in Kingston. Just like, what, two months maybe of hurdles training. So it was meant to be. Yeah, yeah. But I felt like that win that one that win was probably just because I, I was taller than all of them. Because none of them picnic never good. I never good neither, but I'm taller than them, so we have more you know, um leg length. Step over and, and go about my business. Cause you're six five, right? Yeah. Do you find that sometimes it's hard? with your height to like 
shuffle in between the hurdles because you are so tall? Like, do you feel like you have to restrict your stride length sometimes? When I'm fit, it it, it can become a, a real problem because you start to run into the yeah. hurdles. Yeah. You have to try to find a way to chop the strides even more, even though we practice yeah. that in the game. You still find yourself running into the hurdles too fast or getting too close to them. But I feel like my main problem is that I'm just not getting into running fast enough. Because mm. mm. yeah, I, I feel that's a problem for most tall people. Um, when you get into running, you really get into running. But before that, it's just snail movements. Yeah. Okay. That's good. I always like to ask hurdlers about their technique. And you were saying earlier that, you know, Jamaica is really coming along with having a lot more hurdlers. And I always say when people ask me, where's your favorite place to run? It's hands down Jamaica. No one loves track and field like Jamaicans loves track and field. Um, and so I, I wonder, like, what is it like, you know, representing Jamaica, winning a gold for Jamaica? Like, what is it like representing your country where, you know, they eat, breathe, live track and field? Um, I must say, Jamaica is a very tough crowd. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I, have to, I have to add that part. Yeah. Very, very tough crowd. And trust me, sometimes them can be very harsh. Mm -hmm. And if you're, not, if you're not on top of your game, they're going to let you know. You know what I mean? They're not, they not going to be like others who soft and say, oh, yeah, some of them are, but majority going going rough you up. And make you know, say, listen, you need to pull up your socks. But other than that, them love you bad and them always full of excitement and, and, and joy. And you know, that that's one of the things like we keep pushing us to to perform at our best. You know, and it's it's just always a joy when I step out in, in the Jamaica colours because I know my people behind me pushing me forward and you know the support is always big. And cute you know, colors. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, you, you know, I learned something the other day. Um, Jamaica, the Jamaican flag is the only flag that don't have red, white, or blue. Yeah, I think about it. Every other flag, if they don't have white, they have blue, or they have red. Jamaica, Jamaica flag is the only flag don't have any of those colors. And we have the nerve to be screaming red, white, and blue like we something special. <laughs> Yeah, not for the couple of them have the same colors. Them just probably turn the flag one different way. Yeah. 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 That's that cool. was probably the most unique. You know what I love about running at Jamaica, too? Is them little, little horns. Like, yeah. I love, I don't know. When I step in the stadium, they go, they have those going off. I'm like, oh, I'm about to run fast today. Because you want to put on a show for them. You want the chumps feeling. You know what I mean? Yeah. That, that's something else. Trust me, that what you what you got is not compared to the champs feeling. You know, my Trust mom me. actually goes back for champs every now and again, her and her friends. Like, imagine people leaving, traveling <laughs> from the States <laughs> to Jamaica just to watch champs. And it's the champs. whole thing, like planning out their outfits, the horns. <laughs> yeah. I'm ready to go. I'm ready to show up. I love it. I love it. Champs is, is oh. awesome. You know, people dress up in a them them school uniform, um, specially made geared, you know, for specific schools, Kingston College, JC, all of them them big school there. And trust me, it's a big rivalry and actually probably the biggest track event um besides the 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 international ones where we know like the Olympics and the World Champs and so on. Mm -hmm. It's is the biggest thing where track and field is concerned, especially for high school students, there's nowhere else where they have anything like that with this kind of support and and, and excitement that we have. So. Yeah, the closest, I think the closest thing we have is Arcadia. But I'm a, I'm a, oh. I'm one day I'm gonna come through, give me a plate of curry <laughs> goat, and I'm gonna Ooh, come watch. Champs. Anytime. Hopefully, they get rid of this COVID thing fast, so we can go back to regular programming. <sighs> Exactly. Exactly. What was it like training in COVID for you? In, initially, it was tough because you know there were whole heap of lockdowns, 
um, closing of the track and, and, you know, people had to find um, ingenious ways to, to work. But after a while, they started to reopen it and um, they had like curfew and everything. Because so, I used to train like 6 p.m. in the evenings. Oh. And because, yeah, because of the curfew, we had to switch to 6 a.m. in the mornings. One big switch we took a little while to get used to, but we had to make it work. But they were trying to not have the crowd at the track in the evenings. I think it worked out pretty fine. Um, so after a while, despite the whole lockdown and, and what was going on, we were still able to train. That was good. I mean, given the results, I would say it worked out pretty fine for you too. <laughs> <laughs> for real. <laughs> Um, I had one more question that people were asking in the track, uh, in the chat, people were wondering who you train with and where you train, who your coach is. Fitz Coleman is my coach. Um, real elder, but I don't train with anybody that they might know. Well, Candice McLeod, she was in the finals of the 400 this year at the Olympics. Somebody asked about um, her in the chat as well. Yeah. Yeah, and Odario is training with me, Odario Phillips. You don't know him yet. You're going to know him soon. Hopefully, he's, he's bossing out next year. Um, Dijua Russell is, is training with me as well. Um, he was one of the stars at Champs, was winning a bag of things. Um, the hurdles, 100. Yeah, he went to Calabar, which was one of, one of the big schools. Yeah, that's about it. It's a very small group, but we train the same place with Wraith as track club. Mm -hmm. So you know, we everybody cool. Sometimes we're working together. Um, Coach Okil is there as well with his group. And most of them are university students as well. So like Jail Hyde is a part of the group. Um, Taekwondo Tracy. Um, Rochelle Clayton. So there are a few people. Sounds like a vibe. Yeah, man. Always a vibe. Always. Training can't boring. <laughs> and training uh, boring is too hard. Can you imagine you have six three hundred and the vibe just dead? I can actually. <laughs> that must be good. good. But you're right. Um, there's a question in here about uh, Anthony Henry, I'm going to change your question around a little bit, but Anthony wanted to know, now that I think about it, do you think the IAAF could use the champs and NCAA model to create franchise-based based athletics competition? But I'm actually more curious, um, you know, going back to Jamaican fans, why haven't we had the world championships in Jamaica yet? Like, is there talks about bringing... Jamaica can't manage that. You can't manage, you don't think? No, we're going to need for change up, this, fix up the stadium properly and, and sort out proper accommodation and all them someday. As in it possible, it's very possible, Just but we're going to need some changes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it would be dope, though. That would be... Yes. Do you know, you know where my mind immediately went to? The post-World Championship party after <laughs> in Jamaica. Hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> that party would be lit, okay? Yep. Lit. <laughs> A vibe. Like, now now I need that in my life. Everybody would, would enjoy the, the after party if, if they had it in Jamaica. It would be different from everywhere else. For sure, for sure. Yeah. No, we just I'm need to just... the stadium. I think I feel like once we tackle the stadium, we could we could host that. I think. Well, listen, I'll I'll definitely be long retired. But if that happens, I'm booking I'm, my yeah. ticket from the Trackle day they announce. <laughs> Track summer will host the after party. Let's just go. <laughs> <laughs> That would be so amazing. So amazing. So again, keeping it in, in tune with Jamaica, Team Jamaica, or it doesn't have to be Team Jamaica um, because you seem to be a student of the sport overall. But here at Track Girl Summer, sometimes we like to ask our guests 
if they could put together an all-time or all-star team, what would their team be? Who would their team be? So if you could put together an all-time hurdle, shuttle, relay, I was about to mess that all up. (laughs) Shuttle, hurdle. See, I did mess it up. (laughs) You did. (laughs) What would that team be? Mm. Wait, all time time. out. Is it going to be all male or is it going to be two men, two women? The hands will decide. But yeah, you can you can mix it up if you want to. Um. All right. That being said, I, I would I would give Grant the start on my team. Okay. Because in both like a and I feel like I'd do. do um, let's see. I would do Daniel. Daniel Williams. Daniel Williams. Okay. Mm-hmm. Second leg. Me anchor it still. Me anchor it still. Let me go know from now. Um. I'm not fast enough. <laughs> I can't get to it fast enough when you drop those. Who me a good third leg now? Third leg. Cause I feel like we're already there in front of the, everybody else. So we don't really need to run too hard after a while. Um, all right, Megan, Megan third it, come true, and then we just finish the show. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> my mom in the chat, my mom said, of course he would. <laughs> Hi, mom. <laughs> All right, all okay. right. Okay, so you got so it's Grant, Danielle, Daniel Williams, Megan, Megan, you, and myself. Ooh, all time team though. Would you leave Bridget Foster off? Hilton, I always forget to throw in her married name. We um, could do a whole nother team. Was that your all star team or your you all? See this- these kind of teams are too difficult to build. So many to pick from, right? Everybody, everybody's good. Because I had a completely everybody. different team. <laughs> no, I feel, I feel like I could use anybody, to be honest. Mm-hmm. Once, every, once they are fit and you know at their best, you can throw in a, a, anybody really, and you could have a crazy team. I could, I could have Omar kicking it off. Um, Oh, I could better. have, I could have, um, let's see who I would put on a second, like Kendra on a second. Um, I could put in like Shubenka or even Ortega. It's, it's too, it's the team is too hard to pick because any, any one of those guys would be a stellar um, player in the team. You're right. Cause like my little small mind was over here thinking about Team USA and Jamaica, but you just you right, you right, <laughs> you right. Yeah, yeah. You right. I, I, I would throw in uh, Lu Zhang because when he <laughs> is healthy, when he is exactly. healthy, exactly. We we can go we can go back for some of the, the older guys, and it, it would still be a crazy epic team. You know yeah. what I mean, Robles, I, Robles. Yeah. You know what I mean, I, I watch I watch a lot of Robles videos when when I was working on my technique because I just love how he approached the hurdles. I, I was trying to do his start, but I couldn't catch that. The way that was my next question. Yeah, the way he, he leaps from the blocks, I was trying to do that, but that that don't work for me. No, so that was my next question. Who if who were the hurdlers that you watched and you were like? This technique, I'm gonna steal a little bit from him. I'm gonna steal a little bit from him. Like I loved. There's certain hurdles. I'm like, I love watching them hurdle. Who were who are those people for you? Robles was it for me? I I was watching. I, well, I watched. I was watching Yu Zhang as well. But I feel I feel like um everything that I emulate was mostly from what I saw Robles doing, and not, and mm-hmm. I had I had the opportunity to compete with him 2012 in the semis and that was that was really a lot of fun you know I unfortunately he wasn't so healthy at the time 
he hurt his hamstring. But trust me, I, that that was just a joy for me to compete with the same guy I've been watching on my TV and watching YouTube videos of of how um, you know clinically he, he was over the hurdles. And that was just awesome. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Hi, yeah, yeah. Almost get to that point where we're like. I used to watch you and now I'm lining up against you. Like, what is this? Right. Your idol becomes your rival, right? For real. Yeah. But it also sounds like you like took in that moment. Like, I studied you, but I'm gonna bust your ass too. <laughs> yeah, because, let me tell you, um, like like hurdle I, I I ran I ran national record in that semifinals. I think I ran 13, 14, I think it was. Mm-hmm. And I think like hurdle seven, eight, I caught up to him. And I think he, he kind of, he, he realized I was catching up and then he was digging for that extra gear to, to um, get to the line before me because I, I was going to pass him. And then I realized he was digging deep. I just relaxed and went through because of course it's the same as, it doesn't matter what lane I'm in for the finals. It's, it's one, it's down the stretch. It's not like I'm going around the corner, so you know I don't really need to win the semis. So that that was fun to see that you know he had to put in a little extra drive to make sure he, he's staying in front of me. Did that give you a little notch in your belt going into the final? Like, you see, the thing is, I'm done confident from before that, you know, but. <laughs> Excuse me. I'm over here asking answers. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, I feel like I feel like that's the 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 mindset that we need to approach the races with. You know what I mean? With, whether you you're in the best shape of your life or not, because any card can play is hurdles. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Somebody can hit a hurdle and you fly past them or make a bad step or you know, anything can happen. Or maybe I'm just faster stepping over the barriers. So I feel like confidence, yeah, you have to have that all the time when you step out. Yeah. That is what I'm getting from this whole conversation. Where did you where did you get this confidence from? Like, how did you build this? Because that's all I hear in all your answers is like, I believe in me and I, I have no doubts. But it's still very it's still a very humble confidence though. Yeah. But very confident. Well, I, I feel like it's um just the people I'm around and you know, my coach is always talking to me about like for instance um, doing interviews because I'm usually very shy and not very good with talking publicly and them kind of things and him always say Ansel just take your time take a deep breath um, you don't need to rush anything think about what you're saying you know what I mean you can pause nothing wrong with that and you know just relax and there's this other one of my coach's friend, yeah, Mr. Clark, he's always at the track, always just come through, come check on us and give us some, you know, motivational talk and, you know, ways different ways of thinking and them kind of vibes and even the friend the friends that I'm around. So I feel like a com- combination of that. Plus I did some psychology in school as well. So yeah. um I feel like all of that come together and and which is why I'm, I'm here now. Yeah, Nicholas Campbell in the chat says, "Ever heard about the phrase Liko Batalawa?" <laughs> no, <laughs> I have. <laughs> so we want to be mindful of your time, but there was a question that came up in the chat, um, and you know, it came up a little. You brought it up a little bit, um, talking about the trials, and Team USA is very strict about top three is who goes on to the Olympics or the world championships and correct me if I'm wrong. I hope I'm not misspeaking with this, but Jamaica, the rule I believe is top two. And then the third place they can decide is like a provisional spot. Um, Well, that's what I, I've been hearing a lot. Not like I've seen any, any paperwork to say this is actually what it is, but I've always heard them saying that, that those are the rules. Mm -hmm. And, and so, we've seen it happen. We've seen it happen several times where they change the third place um, person mm-hmm. for somebody who they believe would be better suited. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. 
Do you want to speak to how you feel about that rule? Do you think that's there's good reason for the rule or because we in in USA there's a lot of people that's like that rule should be changed because we've had instances where in in the hurdles the world record holder ends up staying home because she didn't perform on that day or you know someone had a bad day at the trials and they don't get to go and so the argument is that you're not sending your best team but then there's also like but if you didn't show up today yeah what makes you think you can perform if you can't perform at USA, it makes you think you can perform at World Champs at, at the Olympics. Yep. Like it's for me, I feel like it's like the perfect trial. It's called trials for reasons. So it's a trial run. Mm-hmm. Figure mm-hmm. out who can who can perform when the lights are on. Yeah, sometimes it's a, it's a sticky situation mm-hmm. because you know everybody would want to see the best people out there performing for the country, mm-hmm. right? But is 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 what you do on the day? Right, you could be at the Olympics and the same thing happened to you. Mm-hmm. You, you could just something could happen that throw off your game and you're just not at your best when you're supposed to be at your best. And we always know anything can happen. So as much as we would like to always have the best people, because sometimes um, it happens that the people who you thought were the best, not the best, or the people who you thought were not the best, come and show say they are better. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So the trials is really there to 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 select the team. Mm-hmm. And I feel like that is what it should be. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And I feel if anyone proved that to be true, it's you. I mean, <laughs> because had they left you at home, they would have left the gold medal out. They would have left the gold medal on the table. Yeah, we still don't know that either. Because yeah. That, yeah. No, we do, because you what? <laughs> yeah, yeah, we understand that, but I could have somebody else could have replaced me and them still win the goal. I mean, Omar could have still win the goal. It it would it's possible. You know what I mean? He he was running fast, he was fit, he was in good shape. So That's- you know what I mean, the possibility was still there that he could win. But unfortunately he wasn't able to to come through um, at the trials and that is just a part of the game. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Twenty nineteen I was I had a awesome background and probably one of the strongest in my life and I thought I would just come down the place and then boom injuries slowed on the whole thing and I was just not fit enough for the trials I came through for it right the third place man was a youngster who just came out um, from high school and thing I think uh, what time him run again I think 13 30 something I think him did run he never make the finals at the, at the world champs right I'm sure I would I've I've made the finals, but you can't take off the man. Um, yeah. in run for him spot. Mm-hmm. You know, put me on who you know or who you feel more confident would go further. You know what I mean? That that a theme opportunity for sure. Why him got for sure? You know the work that he's been putting in. So I feel like that is it's fair to to let the 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 the, the, the process work. Yeah, yeah. And let me just again applaud you. Um, from start to finish, injuries this season, trials, controversy, but you still kept your head down in the sand, focused, wrong venue. <laughs> I'm going to change my start. And you came out on top and not many people can go through all of those things, handle those things with the grace. Even talking to you now, it's like, poor raising because you're giving the story so much color and passion and and maybe it's the accent but i mean i just i want to give you your flowers because i mean way to you know put the bow on top you know it's it's not always the the outcome but the journey and to hear that you remained humble and graceful through all of that and now are the Olympic gold medalists. I'm sure there's more to come. Tell us where you are. What's what's up next? Next season, vacation. Well, I'm just chilling for the for the moment. Um I'm I'm planning already how I want to approach next year. Okay. It's a world championships. It's gonna be in Eugene, Oregon. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's gonna be exciting. I, I know the, the stadium is going to be jam packed. Not like over Japan, where it was empty, so it's gonna be a whole different kind of vibe. And I want to be ready for that, so you know I'm planning from early, as I want to show my stuff, 
uh, you know, and have fun while I'm doing it as well. So really looking forward to that. I have, yeah, Corey. I have one last question for you because, gosh darn it, I hate it when it does this. Um, reading your resume, you got your first Olympic medal in 2012. You got your last gold medal. No, not your last, but like your latest gold medal, your latest Olympic medal in 2021. That's almost that's almost a whole decade between these medals how are you able to how are you able to have such a long career and be on the top of the podium 10 years after your almost nine years after sorry it's nine years after injuries. But. injuries injuries is the cause of that you know why because when you're injured you have to rest. you know you don't you have a risk right while everybody else i run up and down and i run down their muscles i'm chilling because I really can't do much. I have to I have to rest to recover. And sometimes even after all the rest, and, you know, I think I would recover properly. I still don't rec- recover properly and still have to rest even longer. So I feel like injuries play a, a major role in why I can still produce, you know, fast times even now. Because I've run less than some of the other guys. And... You know, I still feel young, so. The you know, I, look- I love, I love <laughs> I how you are making lemons out of lemonade out of lemons, like finding the silver lining and in injuries. I I was never expecting that. I I thought you were gonna say it was the yams. Uh, <laughs> well, well, you know that always play a, play a role in you know, the whole thing. We can't <laughs> look for them. Either. You know what I mean? But but when I real though, injuries play a, a major role in that. Well, I want to respect your time. Um, it's almost one o'clock, so unless you have any last second questions, Tasha. I don't, but I just want to end it on, you know, we're Team USA. I, I'm, I always throw in my, my Jamaican. Oh, you're making it day. <laughs> But I just want to say, like, you know, we, we are always like, we're the number one team in the world, but you know what, Parchment? Team Jamaica is always down our backs. <laughs> We're always so talk your talk. <laughs> Con- yeah. Continue yeah. to. I hope to hear a whole lot of this in Eugene next summer, and I'm praying that we're all there next summer. And I, I this was just such a pleasure. Um, I'm so grateful that you took the time out of your schedule to to talk to us. The our viewers, they were definitely asking, like, when are you going to get parchment on? We want parchment. We asked who, you know, you're our first international guest. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Respect, respect. Uh, and someone wants me to say something. <laughs> Let me pull I, it up for you. Let I me pull it up for I you. Can't even, I can't even begin. begin. Help her out, Parchy. Know. Help her. You see that All comment? Right. Where? Where am I looking? At, at the bottom of the screen? Like, by me. By you. Oh, oh, go, go on, huh? What could you hear you? I don't know how to say that. No, like, give, give her a culture a little bit. Give her a little lesson. All right, let me say it for you and you just repeat. Little, wait, it gone. Little, oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> what, what does it mean? Y'all have me, I don't even know what it means. <laughs> you say it first and you get the meaning afterwards. Okay, okay. It should be easy for you, man. Okay. You're not European. Huh? May I say you're not European. It should be easy for you. Yeah. <laughs> say it one more time for Apache. Yeah. Little but with Talawa. Little but what Talawa. But with. Wow! <laughs> yeah, that was a good first first try. Yeah. What did so I just can... say? It's basically saying, you know what I mean? Jamaica is a small island, but we have a big impact. Yeah, small but oh, mighty. Small but mighty. That's one of my favorite phrases. Yeah. Okay, I like that. I like that. Some more, some more you can use it for your people, him. Well, Pachi, thank you so much for coming <laughs> on Track Girl Summer. We appreciate you. Um, in the comments, they're saying that you can get me a wig for um my next meet apparently you know how to fix the wigs up right with shelly i'm not saying that 
<laughs> um, but thank you so much. Make sure you guys follow Parchy at, at parchment underscore Hansel. Um, follow, follow Natasha at Natasha Hastings. Follow me at the Cory Monster. Follow at Trackle Summer on the things. Um, go to Trackle Summer. Get your mama a t-shirt. She said she want one. She told me herself. Um, <laughs> we'll be back next week with some more guests. It's going to be a good time. And remember, no matter what time of the year it is, it's always a Trackle Summer, baby. Bye. Bye. Parchy, don't leave. Like, stay, but we'll go.